Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 10 Talks. My name is Emily Price. It's Father Anthony. And you are joining us here today live in our atrium at Clearwater Academy. Very excited to show you this. Um, today's 10 Talk is going to be about entering into Holy Week, mm -hmm. as was the last one. But we want to talk about one of the great mysteries of Holy Week and recognizing that there are many great mysteries in Holy Week and also recognizing that sometimes they are so great that they're a bit intimidating or mm -hmm. a bit confusing or hard to enter into. Mm -hmm. What we would like to propose today is that you enter into them through the heart of a child. That's right. With simplicity and love. And childlike nature. <laughs> so that's why we're at the atrium where we have the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I'm going to explain a little bit about that. Some of you know about the Montessori method. Maria Montessori, who when she was teaching children, realized that they perceive information so much better when they can use their senses and also use their inquisitiveness, their curiosity, learning to listen and then ask questions. And then they learn to actually take what they've been taught and teach it themselves to one another as they do the little jobs here in the atrium. So Sofia Cavaletti took the Montessori method and applied it to the catechesis. So we have the catechesis of the Good Shepherd. And just uh, in case you didn't know, like for example, this image here that I'm holding in my hand is a two-dimensional image of the Good Shepherd. And we use two dimensions when we're telling a story that is a parable and didn't happen in real life, but is a story. But then three-dimensional figures are used when it represents real life. Jesus told a story of the Good Shepherd, hence this image. But Jesus is the Good Shepherd, hence this image. So everything in the um, atrium that is used, as you can see um, from the materials we have in front of us, are made by the teacher, and sort of owned by the teacher, so then that can be transmitted or communicated to the children. So that's what we're going to do today if you want to learn a little bit about these mysteries. Yes, so I will be playing the role of the child, hence my little Clearwater headband. Very and I get to stylish. be the teacher, so how's that? Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so with the um, Montessori method to be used here, the teaching, the first thing that we do is have a little explanation of some of the words that the student will hear and presenting the materials. And then there comes a sacred moment where we'll open up the, the gospel or the scripture passage, and I won't be interrupting actual narration so to begin let's just put ourselves in the right context we've done a couple talks about Lent and a time of preparation what are we preparing for at the end of Lent what is that great mystery that we're excited to celebrate Emily the Passover the Passover <laughs> so it's it's what the Jews celebrated to remind themselves of their freedom from Egypt and going into the promised land but as Catholics, we're going to be celebrating, we wear purple now in preparation for a feast called Easter. So this, these very important days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, are the ways in which we enter into the mystery, those three days. So the Passover was the rite of the Jewish, right, that they used to celebrate a special meal to remind them of that freedom. So we'll have different things show up in this meal, like the flatbread, like the bitter herbs, like the wine, so these all have a significant meaning. But then some new words will be spoken as well that you might be familiar with that Jesus incorporated in his Last Supper. So he took this rite of Passover and then instituted a new rite that we called Eucharist. And so I'll say words over the bread and over the wine that are different. Um, so would you like to hear the story of the Last Supper? Yes. Okay, so now we take the word, and as I read it, and we're going to use our figurines to help us. But before we start, we always, in the atrium, have to light our candle to show the sacred moment where the word is being proclaimed. I'm not sure, Miss Emily, if you've been trained to light the candle, so I will light the candle <laughs> for us. Hopefully not burn my fingers. Okay, so we have our candle lit. That reminds us of the word being read. The day of unleavened bread arrived in which the Paschal lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover banquet. They asked him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He replied, As you enter the city, you will find a man carrying a water jar. Follow him to the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks of you, where is the room in which I will eat the Paschal lamb with my disciples? 
He will show you a large upstairs room that is already furnished. Make preparations there. So they went and found the room as he had told them, and they made preparations for the Passover banquet. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. And gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. Then he took the chalice, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, all drank from it, and Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which will be poured out for many. And singing songs of praise, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So we know this happened on Thursday night. This is what we call the Last Supper, but it's not the end of the mystery. What happened on Good Friday? How did Jesus give his life for us? On a cross. On a cross. So now we place the cross. And on that last day, we celebrate the light of the resurrection. So we place our candles here. We can even light our candles. And as I light the candles, look at this Last Supper table and think about what it looks like to you. What does it remind you of, of a place where we go and where we pray and we have the same things on our table? What does that remind you of, Miss Emily? It reminds me of the chapel and of the altar in our chapel. That's right. So these words that Jesus said at the Last Supper, he took the Passover rite, and then he added these new words. This is my body. We see the bread. This is my blood. We see the wine. Right? This is the place where Jesus made this new mystery we call Eucharist. So what does that mean for us as we continue during Lent and prepare for Holy Week, this beautiful mystery of the Last Supper? that's been sort of placed in front of us that we can experience even with all of our senses. What does it mean for us that that Last Supper, that Passover rite, is now brought into a new rite, the rite of the Eucharist, a rite of thanksgiving where Christ redeems us, and it's not something far away 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. but every time we come to church and we go to the altar, we receive the Lord, the Lamb of God, who was offered in sacrifice, who becomes body and blood for us. So maybe... We can talk about what would be takeaways from this lesson to help us for Holy Week. Mm, I think, uh, just as you said, remembering the, the greater mystery of the historical kind of roots of our faith, that it's not something that just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and I think, again, just looking at it through this, the eyes of a child and through this catechesis, that it can be something simple. Um, that it is just an act of love of Jesus giving and yeah, yeah. And, and then just like we celebrate some of those hard moments like the cross for Jesus we have our own crosses we can feel a little bit alone or that God might feel far away but when we think that that last supper happens at our altars and we can go and be close to the Lord in mm -hmm. Eucharist we can go to adore him we can go to receive him right we can have him inside of us that the Lord is a God who is close to us who knows every one of our needs and that if we enter into these mysteries like little children, right, we please the Lord and he fills our hearts and souls with the graces that he wants to give us this Easter. Mm, I love that. Thank you, Father, for walking us through that. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And we will see you next week, next time. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Easter.